All right, so this is the last laptop I was telling y'all about. Uh, I can't for the life of me figure out what's wrong with it. It charges the battery like it's supposed to. If I lift it up and I turn it on, you'll notice the fan will begin to spin. But you never, ever, ever see the screen light up. I have an HDMI cable plugged in. Now I know this isn't a good uh, indication of whether a computer's booting up because oftentimes they won't boot up without an operating system and, and go over to HDMI. But you can see that it, it triggers the capture card, but it never it never boots. <clears throat> I've tried different RAM. Uh, and just for the sake of and notice the fan will quit spinning after a little while, but it's like it's still on. It's like it's confused. So if I unplug the the, uh, the battery, so it got some charge in it. So I'm going to disconnect the battery real quick. Oh, this is the battery right here in it. Okay. So if I disconnect the battery, yeah, we'll disconnect it, and then we'll come in here with a pair of tweezers. We'll try to remove this CMOS. So we'll short out both ends of the CMOS to make sure that there is no energy left in there. <coughs> if we check the voltage on our CMOS battery we get 2.8 volts which isn't very very high do I have another BIOS battery sure I've got one somewhere in here so let's uh let's check this one see if it's got a little more juice in it Oh my. Yeah, it's got 3.1. So we'll put we'll put this one in there. All right? So it's been long enough to where this thing has it had uh BIOS in. So we'll go ahead and why aren't you staying in there, honey? Can I get you out? Maybe I have to do it like this. I don't know how you're supposed to do this. It's the little things, man. It's the little things that get me. What is the correct? It's a 2032, right? I guess it's a 2032. Why won't you fit in here? Guess we'll hold it on. We'll hold it down. But truth be told, I should be able to boot it without a BIOS, and it should be fine, right? So let's uh, let's go ahead and let's put one screw back in the battery to make sure the battery doesn't flop around. Like so. Okay. We'll go ahead and plug it back in. We will hold up BIOS just to make sure it's making good contact. And we will power on. I'm going to see what happens. I'm pretty sure I've done this in the past, but for the sake of being thorough, I figured I'd do it again. It doesn't try to reboot like you, like a normal laptop. If you if you disconnect BIOS, it, it doesn't. It'll reboot a couple of times to try to get in there. It does nothing. So I am at a loss.
for this. Yeah, and it just stays on. It doesn't it doesn't uh do anything else. Doesn't do anything else. So yeah, I think it's been long enough. It's not tried to reboot as the fan kicked off. Yeah, so exact same same behaviors as it was doing before. And I feel the CPU is getting warm. So it's it's like it's on, but it's not doing what it's supposed to do, I don't think. Uh, so, if we notice, it's, we look under the microscope, we should see a chip that looks very familiar to something I was working on the other day. This is the BIOS chip, and it's a wind bond, just like on the PS5. So we are going to remove that and uh, disconnect the battery. All right, chip is off. All right, it's on there. So, let's switch over to, let's plug this into our USB hub, gonna open Neo Programmer, okay, we are going to read our IC. All right, so we're going to file. I'm going to save this as Lenovo. I think it's a 500S. Doesn't really matter, I suppose. We're going to go ahead and save that, right? So then we have to go to Lenovo site and we have to download uh, the BIOS for that. It's going to come to BIOS. And then the problem here is the, here is the issue is they, they don't give you the bin file. They just give you the update file as an exe file right so if i open this folder and i'm gonna con i'm gonna i'm gonna control x and i'm gonna paste this onto bios folder I'm going to say control V, right? So if I were to extract this, so let's, let's go and let's download 7-Zip. So we will go to 7-Zip.org. Come on, Bing. Why are you so slow? So we're going to download... 64-bit, oh, whatever, keep anyway. Keep anyway, bro? Trying to tell me what I can and cannot download. So... I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say install. 
I'm going to say close. So now I'm going to go on my desktop. I don't even know if y'all can see my desktop. How do, you, how do I show my desktop? I'm going to get rid of all of this. Oh my word. So we're going to go into BIOS and we're going to say Control V or we're going to right click. And we're going to use 7-zip. Oh, here we go. Show more options. Stupid Windows 11, man. And I want to extract the files. So I'm going to select OK. Man, I hope y'all can see this. So there's the folder. Uh, and I don't see... I don't see the... I don't see a bin, a ROM, or a .cap file in there anywhere. So, so I don't exactly know I don't know. All right, so there's another thing, a tutorial I was following to to get uh, to get this stuff out, and so I I ended up I was able to get the the cap file off of that tool, but uh, I cannot remember how how I did it. Okay, so. So now, let's go to uh, HXD, a free hex editor. So let's take our hex editor. Let's go to downloads. How do you get to downloads? I want to go to the Windows. It might not even work on Windows 11. But I'm going to use the English. So let's download that. I'm going to open the zip file. I'm going to run the setup application. Select next. I accept. Next. 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 Install. And I'm going to launch the editor. Right? So I'm going to file. I'm going to open. I don't want to do the zip. I want to go here. I want to go into dumps. I want to go to this one. Open. All right. So that is the... That is the... Uh, BIOS that was on that chip. So how do I do a window? I want to tell vertically. Now I want to file, open. I want to go to desktop, BIOS. And I want to open this cat file. So how do I, there we go, good grief. All right, so this one, this is the cat file, and it does not look like how do you determine because i don't I don't think I can just throw the cat file on there and say, "Okay, bro, here's your bios, dude." I don't I don't think I can do that. I don't think it would it it just wouldn't work, I don't think. So I need to figure out how So what I'm doing now is I found a bias for a yoga but it, it was the same motherboard. Um, here, I'll show you the motherboard. 
uh, I don't know how to do this mic. Uh, so the motherboard revision was under here and it was in um, the LT41 SKL MB14292-1 and when I Google that it gives me a BIOS or on bad on bad caps uh, forums it uh, is giving me a yoga BIOS that's the only one I could find so that's what I'm installing now onto the BIOS IC and uh, and then I'm just going to try it and see the problem with BIOS is they're, they're complex. They're complex uh, things and I don't understand how to modify them. I mean, I understand how to modify them to like change values. But the problem is, is I don't understand which values to change. For example, the BIOS is going to have uh, the Windows uh, activation key. It's going to have the serial number, the MAC address of, of, the, uh, of the laptop. And all those things need to be edited and changed to reflect uh, the 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 uh, the actual laptop. But my problem is, is I don't know how to find those things, nor do I know how to change those things, and then I don't know which part of the exist or 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 the the exe file that you can download from Novo, Lenovo. I don't know. I don't know how to extract the actual BIOS from that specific executable file. There are tools on the internet, like on GitHub, you can find noextract.exe, uh, and you can run that, and it'll break that exe down into its component parts, um, and it gives you a CAD file, a .cad, and within that .cad, I'm assuming is uh, the information for the BIOS that you need, but it's gigantic and I don't know how to parse that information to figure out what's what and what needs to go where. It's thoroughly confusing. And I haven't found yet a tutorial. A lot of folks are like, I'll just use 7-zip to extract the contents of the EXE file and just grab the ROM. Well, that doesn't work for Lenovo EXE BIOS files. All right, so the, the chips wrote so i'm just going to read it real quick uh, to make sure it's on there and then i'm going to put it back on the laptop and we're going to try to boot it with this bios that i downloaded off the internet what's the worst that could happen i can't see the other side so i hope it's good Looks good. No. Oh. And automatically cut on. Let's see what happened. Laptop automatically turned on. We're going to get screen this time. It's not turning off, which if it was accepting the box, uh -oh, I don't know what that's all about. Well, it turned off. It's, current, it's turning back on. We got beeps out of it this time at least. That's pretty cool. It turned back off. Is it going to turn back? It's turning back on. Oh, I saw, I saw a screen flash. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got something you guys can't see it, but it's like a gray screen. It's like a white screen now. So that's definitely the wrong BIOS, but. Oh, it cut back off. Or was that me cutting it off? All right, so let's turn it back on. Is the screen bad? It's just not working. That's a bad bias. Okay, we can't use that bias. Well, we're a little we're a little closer to fixing this laptop. We're a little bit closer, but that is the wrong bias. So I'm gonna keep looking and see if I can't figure out how to get a good bias on here.
All right, I want to show y'all something. This is the scene of the HDMI port, and notice it's asking me if I want to boot from my Windows Boot Manager. But if we go back up to overhead, we can see what the screen's doing. So does that mean the screen is bad? I don't know what that. I don't know what it means. I think I need to install an operating system on this, and then try to somehow install the actual BIOS, the executable file. I'm going to try to do that. So I've made it this far working off my capture card. It's just taking forever because it's the wrong BIOS. So let's talk about where I'm at with this laptop. I've been working on this thing for days. And I'll turn it on. And we'll see uh, where we're at. So I'll hit Shift F2 and we'll try to get into the BIOS if we can. So as you can see, I am in the BIOS and it says product name Lenovo IdeaPad 500S141 or 14ISK. Uh, it's got the BIOS version etc. Um, however, it tells me that my system memory is zero megabytes, which is not correct because I have an eight gig uh, stick in here and this doesn't have any onboard RAM. So it would indicate that this BIOS is in some way flawed. Another thing about all of the BIOSes I have attempted to install onto this laptop are that the computer continues to run horribly slow. Horribly slow. And I don't know what to do about that. Uh, I arrow over uh, I mean, we can we can check the BIOS uh, just just like like normal. Um, so yeah. So in any event, you'll notice that the serial number is incorrect as compared to the serial number that I have for this laptop. The serial number is wrong. The UUID is most likely on. Um, Sure, it's wrong. So in any event, uh, this BIOS doesn't do me any better than the other one. And as you can see, uh, the screen is still white. So let's uh, let's kind of talk through how I'm I've done this. Uh, so maybe maybe you guys. Maybe you guys know something about BIOSes that I don't know. Because I don't know. I know very little about how a BIOS functions. Um, so the first thing I did was, let's go over to scene three. Uh, and we are going to drag up. And you can see on this I have many, many different BIOS types. Uh, and the first one I tried, the first one I tried was this Lenovo, Lenovo Yoga 500.151SK. It has the exact same motherboard revision that I have. It's just a different model. And so I noticed it said clear me. And I thought that I was supposed to clear something in this, but I, it didn't matter to me. I loaded it. And that was the very first one, I think, probably in the last clip that I'll show when I edit this, right? So then I said, well, you know what? That doesn't seem... That didn't work. So I said, well, you know what? Maybe... I, I continued to read. Let me, let me preface this. I continued to read, and I discovered that uh, BIOSes have 
few different regions within them because this doesn't this laptop doesn't really run off of a BIOS. It runs off of something known as a UEFI. And so then I discovered that there's this tool out there called the UEFI tool. So if we do a quick uh, search here for UEFI tool, maybe I can find it again. So it's on GitHub. So we'll click there. And we will download it. Now I have to download the tool because I was downloading the wrong thing at first. So we'll download the Windows 64 tool. Um, and we will open this folder. We will extract it. And now the UEFI, UEFI tool is in here. So we'll, we'll click on, we'll double click on it and we'll run it. Uh, more info, run anyway. All right, so now in this tool, I can open an image file. So I'm going to go back to that uh, that BIOS that I had initially put on there, and I'm going to open that BIOS. And it says it's an Intel image, and it has a descriptor region, an ME region, and a BIOS region. So I said, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe the problem is I need to... I need to uh, extract the BIOS from the executable file found on Lenovo's website. So I downloaded the executable file. And so then I said, well, how do you extract the contents of an executable file? So a lot of people online on bad, bad caps and other places, other forums, they said you can use 7-zip, but when you use 7-zip, it doesn't tell you anything. So what I ended up having to do was I had to use a tool called NO Extract. So let's do NO Extract. We'll go to the NO Extract GitHub. In NO Extract Windows Zip. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and download that one, right? So we can get rid of that and we can go to our downloads folder. So here's, you know, extract. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to extract it. So that's our file. So the next thing we have to do is we have to say, okay, well, let me take my, my, we need to go back to downloads. We need to take our, uh, our BIOS update from Lenovo. And then we have to, let's put this right here into our uh, our inno extract folder, right? So that way we can go ahead and run command prompt. And then we can take and we can CD and we'll copy this whole directory, copy address. And now we're going to run the command inno extract. And we're going to run the command uh, of our of our executable file. And so when I do that, it's going to say, "Okay, well there you go. We've I've extracted that file for you." So now if I go into the app folder, which was created as a result of me executing the inno extract, I'm going to see some files. And the file that I'm concerned with is this .cap file. So then I thought to myself, "Well, how on earth do you?" The cap file contains the BIOS, but it's not the BIOS. Originally, I thought the cap file was just the BIOS, but it's not. It contains the BIOS that you need in order to uh, update it. So you have to modify this file in order to actually use the BIOS portion of it. Well, there is a bad caps forum post. Yeah, I think this is it right here. So I'm going to follow the directions that uh, this individual has posted on Bad Caps forums. And the first thing he says to do, or she, I'm not sure, is to delete the first 318 uh, hexadecimal thing. So we're going to start at zero 
and our end offset is going to be 317. So we'll go ahead and select OK, and we will just simply delete that. So then he says to go to Select Block, start to offset at 0, and set the length to be 800,000 and select OK. Then he says select copy. So we're going to right click and we're going to go to copy. And then we are going to create a new file and we're going to we're going to paste it control V. And then we're going to file save that as whatever you want it to be. In this case, it'll be my BIOS and I'll overwrite the one I created. So now when we look at that, that file within that folder, you'll notice that that file is exactly 8,192. Uh, 8,192 kilobytes, right? So that's the BIOS region of a UEFI file created from the .cap file obtained from the Lenovo website. So what I did was I said, okay, well, using my UAFI tool, where does the BIOS region start? And I'm not going to do all this because uh, suffice it to say that it made no difference. Uh, but the base starts here at 8000H. And so if you go, if you open up the UEFI file, for example, the Clear Me BIOS in hex editor, you would go to that block and then you would delete everything after it. And then you would copy and paste everything from the BIOS that you created into it. And then you would save it as a BIOS file. So anyhow, once I did all of that and I created a BIOS out of a cap file, which is good to know how to do, I, I took this one, I cut it in hex editor, and then I paste it, the BIOS that I created from the cap file, and I put in there. And I loaded it back to the laptop, and it did the exact same thing. It was still very slow, and it still told me it was a Lenovo Yoga uh, laptop in the BIOS. So I was like, well, that's not going to work. Uh, so then I did what any normal person would do. I went to Venefix. Dot com and it's a paid site and I paid nine dollars and ninety nine cents for access uh, to their BIOS files and there was quite a few on there that were they said that they were cleared and so I had to figure out what that meant I didn't know what cleared meant so I figured out that I needed a tool <laughs> called uh, ME Analyzer. So if you go to ME Analyzer, you can download the latest uh, package, the latest source code. So I'll download that. And then when I, when I open that, uh, oh, I'll extract it. Uh, so if we look inside there, we see uh, this script right here, and it's a Python file. So he tells you in the directions that you need uh, to have Python installed. So I can't exactly remember where it was. Python 3.7. So if we download Python onto our computer, we're going to customize installation. We're going to install the documentation. We're going to install pip. That's a necessary element because you have to be able to download other things within Python that you need to use. Um, so yeah, so we're going to do all of that. We're going to select next and we are going to add Python to our environment, environment variables. And what this does is it allows you to use Python commands from command prompt. So we're going to select install. So we are going to go ahead and close that. And so one of the things they tell you to do is you need to download these three uh, third-party modules within um, Java, or not Java, but uh, Python. 
and you need to be able to run those. So from here, I'm just going to hit, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to copy in there, and I'm just going to hit enter. And because I added it to my environment variables, I can run these commands from command prompt. So now that we have that in there, so here's how you use the ME Analyzer tool. It is pretty simple. What you do is you take a file, like for example, this BIOS, and if you want to know if it's cleared, you drag and you, you drag and you drop it onto that Python file and it'll pop up a command prompt window and you simply hit enter and it'll tell you that there is this is the CSME this is the version that they used to create uh, this this BIOS uh, it's production it's a corporate laptop and all of these things make a difference uh, in terms of I guess how that laptop was sold obviously this is sold as a personal laptop so it's the corporate license it's corporate low power but technically this should be a consumer low power SKU. but anyhow this is the bios that i that i was messing with at first so we'll stick with this um and so down here the thing that i was looking for is it has to be it has to say configured if it says initialized, then that means that that BIOS belongs to a specific laptop and you cannot just arbitrarily install that, that file onto a new laptop. It won't work. So I was like, well, you know what, man, uh, that's interesting. But how do you take a laptop that somebody has spilled they call it an SPI dump. How do you how do you clean it to make it so that it says configured? Well, so the first thing you need to know is you need to have certain information. You need to know the version of the BIOS that you are currently um, that was spilled. In this case, it was an eleven dot oh oh dot one one nine seven. Um, you need to know what type the SKU, you need to know whether it was corporate or consumer or whatever the case may be, because that's going to affect how you build and clear the BIOS. So essentially on wind raid forums, they have a guide on how to clean the ME region of a dumped BIOS. And it's this whole daggone thing right here they go through and they explain to you what what a uefi is made of the flash description the me region the gbe region and the bios region and anyhow they go through and they tell you one of the things they tell you, you have to have is me analyzer you have to have some of these tools you have to have your engine intel management engine drivers firmwares and tools um and I can't specifically remember where I got all this stuff from because, dude, I went to a lot of different websites and watched a lot of different videos. And this might have been the most miserable thing I've ever tried to figure out in my life. So from here, so let's just right click, open in a new tab. So we will look at the driver software in the tools. So we know based upon our ME analyzer, uh, here that we're looking for we need the the 11.0.0.1197 version and we need a flash image tool that is compatible with that version because apparently Intel puts out a new tool every time they do this so this is the tools and it takes you to a mega download and then I would download uh, whichever tool for me, because it's a version 11, I'm assuming I need to download that, that one specific file, I guess. And it's going to download all of it, so it'll be a minute. So this is downloaded. So if we go into our download folders, 
So we want to look for the CMS system tools and we'll extract it. Uh, extract all. And then within that, they have all the various tools. So for example, we have version 11, which is the tool that we need to use for CSME. So this one right here, so we'll right click on it and we will extract it. And that will open up the actual tool that we need to use to, to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. And so we need to use something called the flash image tool. So we'll double click on it and we'll select, we'll double click it and it'll pop up a window here and we'll go ahead and accept the agreement and we'll select OK. And so this is what the tool looks like. So then what you need to do once you have this tool is you need to go find the file that you want to clean. So I don't, let me see if I have a file that's not clean. So if we look, I just, I just transferred over a file that is not clean. So if I go back into my ME analyzer, locate it here, and I drag this file into ME analyzer, Notice down here on the file system date, it says initialized. So that you can't use that file in that state. So what you would have to do is you would have to clear the ME region, which is what I'm trying to explain to you how I did just in case you ever need to figure it out. So in any event, um, so we need to find the CS uh, firmware repository, which is on somewhere on one of these websites. I'm not exactly sure. Here, I bet here is where I found it. So if I go to CM, CSM 11, right here, it's gonna take me back to Mega. And so we will, uh, I think this is, well, I guess we'll download them all. And that'll take a, a minute or two. Yeah, so we'll use this one as an example of how I was cleaning the ME region on the BIOS. So, and it's at 11.0.0.1160. 11 it's a consumer, low power. It's SKU is SPT, which I don't think that's the right chipset for this laptop I don't think but we'll we'll we'll, we'll do it anyhow it does. I don't know how to determine which chipset because I don't have the original BIOS the BIOS that was on the laptop was only like 2 meg and it was horribly corrupted so it was absolutely useless to even use ME analyzer wouldn't recognize it the only thing I could do with it was open it as in the hex editor. All right, so we're gonna go find our fit tool again. So we're gonna reopen that fit tool. And what we're gonna do, okay, so I'm gonna take that file from, that I pushed over, this file right here. So let's do this. Let's move it over here so I can see it. And we're going to drag this file and we're going to drop it right into our flash image tool. So then I went into build. I went into build settings and I turned these three things off. Um, and I did that because I couldn't get it to come up as clean unless I turned all three of them off. So I'm going to get out of that and then I'm going to file. I'm going to save this as config.xml. I suppose you could save it as anything you want it, but I'm going to save it as config.xml. So I'm going to save that. So now when we go back into our fit folder, where, where our fit executable is at, Notice it created a new folder, and that new folder is the, the exact name of the, the BIOS file that we loaded 
into there. And within it, there's a decomp folder, and within that decomp folder, there is a file called meregion.bin. Okay? So, we downloaded a few minutes ago, we downloaded, uh, I'll show that in the folder, we downloaded our firmware repository. So, we're going to extract all. Okay, so within this, I just had to do it this way. So within this, I want to find, remember, we looked at ME Manager, right? And it was this one? Nope, not that one. Let's close that one. It was this one. It's initialized. And we need to find 11.0.01160. So that's uh, 0 0.0.1160. And it was Consumer LP. So it was this one. This is the one we need. We don't need corporate. And we want to make sure it says region. We don't want it to say extracted because extracted means they took it from somebody's computer. We want it to say region, which is from Intel. So we're going to, we're going to copy this file. And then we're going to go uh, into our fit folder. Take this and I want to extract it. And I want to extract it in... Uh, CMS Tools, 11, uh, Flash Image Tool. I want to I want to put it in this folder. So okay, so okay. So it did that. So here it is. So I'm gonna name. I'm gonna rename this file. Me Region. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So. And then I'm going to take this file and I'm going to paste it into my decomp folder where all those folders we created from building the file earlier were from. So we're going to replace the file in the destination. And now, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back, we're going to reopen fit, and then we're going to take our config. Oh, I've got two open. We're going to take our config file, we're going to drag it in there. And then we're going to build our image. And now, in our folder, we should have an out image.bin. And so if we run that, let's just slide this over. If we run that in ME Analyzer, we should see that same file that we put in as configured, as we did. 11.0.0.1160, same, everything's the same. I flashed it with this tool, and it says configure. Okay, so that's how I cleaned the region on an ME, the ME region on a BIOS. But uh, anyhow, I couldn't get any of that to work. So I finally did find a BIOS from Venifix that was for a 500S, and it had been cleared, uh, and the laptop still doesn't work. So, so yeah, that... So that is where we're at with this uh, laptop, and I'm calling it quits. I'm done with it. Unless somebody knows something about BIOSes that I don't, and can help me finish editing the BIOS to make it run properly. I think I'm tapping out on this one. So, y'all be good.